the concept really uh, it came from from Cycling Canada wanting more people to identify as a cyclist. And when you see it, um, like I think you want to fill in the blanks yourself. Like you, you just you see that there's no one there, and you want to be there. We were brought into a meeting at the agency in Ocean Worldwide, and they um, ended up having a full deck basically flushed out with some ideas. And the trick was, well, they just didn't want to see the riders. The idea was amazing. We knew, like, if we could execute it, it would just be, it would just look epic. It would look amazing. It instantly went to the technical part of, of how to do it. So we were thinking about doing like side rigs. You know, we could puppeteer it. Um, and then, of course, in the back of our heads, we're like, it's going to end up being a lot of paint roto and a lot of CG. We started with sort of a wish list. We're like, okay, well, if ten of the shots are paint roto, okay, I think that's okay. The count went up and it just kept on going up and, it, and then the CG shots kept going up. So we had riders in green, blue or grey suits, which I know aren't magical and I know it's just grunt work to get rid of them, but worst case scenario, we approached every shot with throw a rider on a bike, do a performance pass. So then at least we have good reference for the animators if it ends up being a CG shot. We also had the safety of it being, you know, that actual performance. If we needed to paint them out, fine. The thing with having a rider is that, you know, you need, the bike needs to have that weight, it needs to have the compression of the tires, it needs to have the proper sway. If they're going up an incline or if they're going down, there's just two different stances. I sound like I know what I'm talking about with biking. I, I don't. I, I literally ride my bike back and forth to work, so I've been educated. We chose Nuke Studio for its project management. Uh, the fact that we had everything in the timeline and we could wire all of the new pumps right back in, easy to review um, and easy to just sort of manage everything. I mean, we literally used it out of the box and uh, it worked. It worked great to conform it, to get the material. I knew that I'd have to work with, you know, sort of mirrored conforms and all of this data and, and, and the fact that we had so much CG and so much painting and it was one of those things that going in and out of a flame just wouldn't, it just didn't make sense. I, I couldn't get my head wrapped around how I could manage the project that way. I've got almost 20 years on a flame, but it just, it, it breaks pipelines. It's really hard to get stuff in and get stuff out uh, in any sort of manageable way. We opted for uh, just keeping a linear EXR pipeline. Having color grading in-house, we'd be back and forth a lot, and we didn't want to duplicate the data. So we were assessing what tools do we need, how do we start it, how do we conform it, how do we deal with all that. Baselight came out with a, a Baselight for Nuke plugin, which we were beta testing um, right before the production. We tried it on a couple shorter projects, and it worked out really well. What we would do is we'd go into the color grading suite, set the look, set the base grade, then those BLG files we'd load back into Nuke. If we had somebody coming in for reviews, at least they could see exactly what they saw in the color suite. And obviously we have to pass things back and forth with color, we have to do this, we have to, we have to play, f play nice with what's already in-house. And Nuke Studio seems to be a friendlier app than most others. So we're currently rewriting our pipeline now with basically Nuke at its core. Everyone that I've shown this to, everyone that sees it, you know, they just, uh, they have a new respect for how, how hardcore cycling is and it just makes cycling look so badass.